In this video, I'm going to analyse the 1970s cartoon adaptation of the old Mr. Men book, Mr. Topsy Turvy. Mr. Topsy-Turvy was a funny sort of fellow. Everything about him was either upside down or inside out, back to front, Topsy-Turvy in fact. It was all very extraordinary. To give you some idea of how Topsy-Turvy Mr. Topsy-Turvy was, you ought to see his house. The front door is upside down to start with, and the curtains hang upside down at the windows. And just, just look at that chimney pot. All very extraordinary. Inside is the same. Just look at that clock standing on Mr. Topsy-Turvy's mantelpiece. Isn't that the Topsy-Turvy's clock you've ever seen? And just look at the way Mr. Topsy-Turvy reads a book. Not only does he read it upside down, but, but he starts to read it at the back page. And just look where Mr. Topsy-Turvy puts the stamp when he sends a letter to somebody. Have you ever seen anything like it? Now, the interesting thing about this tale is that Mr. Topsy-Turvy ends up visiting normality, where he's an outsider to this society with values and ways that are completely the inverse of theirs. Nobody's quite sure how Mr. Topsy-Turvy got there, or where he came from. But he did arrive because somebody saw him getting off the train. The trouble was, he did it in a Topsy-Turvy way. Which really isn't all that surprising, is it? day, Mr. Topsy-Turvy went round the town. But what a fuss his going round the town caused. He took a taxi from the hotel. But so confused the taxi driver trying to tell him where he wanted to go, the poor men drove straight into a traffic light. Oh dear, said Mr. Topsy-Turvy. I am sorry, very. Then he went into a big department store in the middle of the town. Walked up to one of the counters. I'd like a sock of pears, he said to the lady behind the counter. You mean a pair of socks, she smiled, and showed him a pair of bright red socks. Mr. Topsy-Turvy put them on his hands. Then he tried to leave. But being Mr. Topsy-Turvy, he tried to walk down the up escalator, and all the people who were going up the up escalator all fell over themselves. It takes Mr. Topsy-Turvy less than a week to completely wreck the ordered world he finds. Quite literally, he turns it upside down. Nobody knew how he went, or where he went, but he certainly went because he wasn't there anymore. The whole town breathed a sigh of relief. But what the town discovered, even though Mr. Topsy-Turvy had left, was that everything was still topsy-turvy. Read all it about, shouted Late the final. newspaper sellers. Instead of shouting, read all about it. News is the here, <laughs> said the television newsreader. Instead of saying, here is the news. Morning good, people started saying to each other when they met him. Do do you how, instead of how do you do? Every, everybody was talking topsy-turvy. 
Back to... Now, can you think of something to say that's, that's topsy-turvy? Now, why am I dwelling on this little kid story? In fact, I was inspired to make it after watching a wonderful stream between Semiagog and Philosophy Cats on Carnival, which I will link in the show notes. If you have not already worked it out, the plot of Mr. Topsy Turvy is precisely what has happened to the West. Language has been turned inside out and back to front. People can no longer distinguish mental illness from expertise, men from women, good from evil, or friend from enemy. In fact, such has been the subversion and inversion of our culture. I wonder if Mr. Topsy Turvy could even be written today, which is to say the social norms of clan world are so bizarre that the Mr. Topsy Turvy of 2021 would probably be what was once just a normal man. One of the key things that Kat said in that aforementioned stream was that order takes constant vigilance to maintain because chaos is just around the corner. Like we saw, it only took a week for Mr. Topsy Turvy to wreck that lovely town. And like we see around us, we live in a society that has been wrecked by subversive forces which are currently banning any and all attempts at restoring proper order. Some have called this anarcho-tyranny. Everyone on our side of things needs to understand that order comes first from power and law. Classical liberal thinkers like Adam Smith and Adam Ferguson, and later F.A. Hayek, imagined that order was, quote, spontaneous. But spontaneous order only arose from men who were deeply religious and raised in a completely ordered world. Things that Smith and Ferguson, and even to some extent Hayek, took completely for granted. If you took the same number of people that formed the new American settlements in the 1600s as the original colonists that made them and replaced them with 2021 people rather than say, you know, 17th century Puritans or Jesuits or whatever, would those 2021 people recreate such spontaneous orders? I highly doubt it. Even if they made it past the first few winters, I can't imagine many people from 2021 not becoming suicidal or depressed or else griping about some self-indulgent nonsense or other. Order, in fact, is never spontaneous. It must be maintained. It must be, to quote Shakespeare, manured, husbanded and tilled. Otherwise, it naturally withers and dies and gives way to chaos. And so ends my catechism. Now available at the Academic Agency. Sharpen your analytical mind and your argumentation skills with Foundations of Logic. The course draws on the ancient wisdom of traditional logic that students learned for over 2,000 years, from the time of Aristotle through to the medieval schoolmen right down to the 20th century. Sign up now for a free preview lecture. Be sure to like this video and subscribe, and if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.